I loved working with Darren. I thought his music was really cool, really interesting. Um, it definitely reminded me of the 70s. It has a very 70s flair to it. I loved learning the songs and also performing them live uh, on set too. Such a blessing. Uh, and then I, I got to sing um, most of the songs in the studio with Darren and his wife Nancy and that was such, such a great time working with them. Um, both of them are just really talented and, and awesome people. When I first read Darren's lyrics, I definitely thought it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek and funny, but to me, if that stuff existed in the 70s, it would be like so cool and groovy, right? It, it's definitely funny, uh, and, and I think a good critique on, 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 um, on what existed back in the 70s. Uh, I used to be in a rock band. Uh, I love all that 70s kind of music, you know, Doors, Led Zeppelin, stuff like that. So acting out my like rock star fantasies in a, in a film, um, definitely caught my eye and uh, it was something I really wanted to do, uh, to do. I'd been a fan of Darren Gordon Smith from Repo, the genetic opera, and so you read this and it has both their sensibilities. They are both so quirky and brilliant and they write and create from what they know from music and this old school era that you will see in the second age of Aquarius. and. It's genius, and I know I'm biased, but it really is genius. So Stacy's writing partner on this um, and producing partner, Darren, I, I couldn't believe it when she sent me a link and I saw his, his opera. It was, on, it was like one of the greatest things I'd ever seen. And I'm a musician. I mean, I write songs and stuff, but I just was blown away by his, this immense genius. So, so Darren and... And Stacy working together was quite a surprise. I didn't really know what I was in for working with such super, I mean, mega talents, you know. And plus, I'd read a lot of Stacy's books since I, I did the part, and I was just blown away by her writing. Um, she kind of like writes like Ray Bradbury. I mean, she's that good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you had sent me the uh, the raw cut of Acid Rain and what it was supposed to sound like. I am not a great guitar player. I had just started learning, but I hadn't picked it up in a while. So the hook was really catchy to me. That's what I remember the most of all. So I just kind of incorporated the hook and then changed the lyrics to fit my voice. It was very uh, Hootie and the Blowfish-esque because, <laughs> and I, I was just trying to encapsulate everything that had happened to the, in the movie or everything Christina's character had told me over the course of the movie into the song. So it just, happen like that and, and as i was trying not to laugh because oh man what am i going to say next what am i going to say next and and then you just yelled cut and they're like oh whew. I, I think they didn't find me out so that was good there's a lot of music in this film <laughs> being serenaded was so much fun i think there's a scene with me and michael where we appear naked we weren't really naked in that scene um where he's singing to me Oh, it was so fun. I, I loved it. I loved all the music. I thought that the, the music was incredibly incredible. Um, and yeah, you know, I, my, my character didn't sing, um, but she did love being sung too. And it was fun even on set <laughs> listening to um, Michael sing to me. And also there was a lot of like behind the scenes songs being sung with the crew as we got delirious filming. Yellow let it mellow if it's brown, flush it down. Fucking flush it down. <laughs> down <to> <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh, dude. This is, <sighs> we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure, we're gonna figure, this figure out. it out. It, it was very reminiscent to me of weird science and the fact of like creating a three-dimensional being from a, a computer program but you, given the fact now, when you have shows out now where you have people disguised as avatars singing and you got 3D holograms performing at concerts. So it, it's quite plausible that this could happen in the near future if it's not already happening around us now. So it, it's, it's kind of exciting, but also kind of scary because you may, you may get to the point one day where you don't know if the person you're talking to is actually a person. Well, the whole <clears throat> plot of the movie was astounding. I mean, it was so, so progressive and hard to pull off so it wasn't anything that was like some you know normal movie it was quite a imaginative 
exercise, <laughs> this whole story was, was amazing. And certainly there's a lot of stuff in, in science and psychology now where they're, they're talking about being able to interpret thoughts and dreams visually to have your brain hooked up. In the second age of Aquarius, I play an avatar. And what's crazy now is that there's uh, actually a new kind of YouTubing called VTubing where people actually perform as avatars. So I think that we're gonna be seeing a lot more avatars in the future of, uh, of just everything, really.